Steve Hackley, Jonathan, Greta, and Carson Sand. Well, Mr. Hackley, I'm so glad you could come. <laughs> ask you to come after sending me such a splendid letter about my novel. Ha, oh, it was uh, really nothing. Oh? <laughs> Mr. Hackley, uh, I, I did mean... you say one of the finest novels? Uh, yes. Why, uh, the, uh, your novel, Miss Sam, The uh, Brow of Zeus, was really one of the finest novels I've uh, read in years. Keith Hackley. Would you care to name even one novel that you've ever read that even compares to The Brow of Zeus? <laughs> well, I, uh, um... If there's one thing we cannot tolerate around here, Mr. Hackley, it's imprecision of language. <laughs> now, you said one of the finest novels. <laughs> what were the others? <clears throat> uh, Hemingway was a rather... Hemingway! <laughs> Good, Good God! God. Uh, of course, you understand when we say the word God, we do not apply agreement with the term. We're merely using it as a strong idiomatic metaphor. Oh, Keith, can't you see Hemingway's death premises in every line that man writes? Death premises? Uh, well, you know, the uh, struggle with the moment, the bull of uh... Hemingway is anti life, anti reason, anti reality. Jonathan Greta, come. We should give Mr. Hackley a chance. He is a lover of the brow of Zeus. And that's a big plus. Yes. <laughs> You're right, Carson. Of course, Carson. Mr. Hackley? Keith, would you like a cigarette? This is a particularly rational brand. <laughs> Why, uh, no, thank you. I, uh, I don't smoke. Thank you. You don't <laughs> smoke. Why not? Uh, well, because I don't like to. You don't like to? <laughs> you permit your mere subjective whims, <laughs> your feelings to stand in the way of reality and reason. Surely, Miss Sand, what possible reason could there be uh, other, other than liking it? I... Oh, come on. Mrs. Sand never does anything out of her subjective feelings, only out of reason, which means the objective nature of reality. You have grossly insulted this great woman and abused her courtesy and her hospitality. But what possible grounds could there be? Why are you evading the self-evident? Smoking is a symbol of the fire in the mind, the fire of ideas. He who refuses to smoke, therefore, is an enemy of the mind and of ideas. Symbol? Like, then it seems like a match would be even more of a symbol. Oh, come on. How dare you mock Carson Sand in this hooligan manner? You wouldn't mock God! Wait, Jonathan. Let us wait before passing final judgment. <laughs> Key? Of course, Carson. Are you a rationalist? Well, uh, that's a very difficult uh, question, you see. Uh, I think that... Uh... Calm, calm. Do you hold reason as your absolute? Well, that <clears throat> depends on how you define rationalism. You see, I would... A rationalist is a man who lives exclusively by his reason, which means by the objective nature of reality to think, which means by a man's own power to think, which means, of course, by a man's own power to grasp reality, which means... <laughs> well done, comrade. <laughs> Mr. Hackley, we're being very patient with you. 
We extend every courtesy, every leeway to a lover of the brow of Zeus. Let me put it another way. Are you a mystic? A mystic? <laughs> Oh. I don't believe in any of this Zen Buddhist business. Oh, really? Oh. Keith, I'm trying to have a serious conversation with you. But yes, but you see, I... I Please, like... give me the courtesy of allowing me to complete a, a thought, a single thought. Well, I'm sorry. Surely you must realize I'm not talking about the twisted, leprous, Asiatic bum sitting somewhere on a diaper. That's only the most blatant, the most obvious kind of mystic. <laughs> yeah, I know Los Angeles is full of queer. Oh, women. come on. <laughs> Mr. Hackley, why do you continue to evade her frank and forthright questions? We both know you're running like hell. Now, look here, I don't know what you're talking about. Keith, to put it simply, a mystic is someone who allows nothing to come, uh, allows everything to come between his, his reason and his reality, who places something above his values. Do you see? <laughs> are, you, are you religious, Keith? Oh, am I religious? I see. Uh, well, not really, you know. I, uh, uh, I would attend church maybe twice a year, Christmas and Easter, you know, that sort of thing. Only twice a year, he says. You know where that comes from. Well, of course. There's a passage on page 236, paragraph 2 of the Brow of Zeus, which explains this syndrome perfectly. Yes. And he allows his near subjective whims and to come between. The subjective feelings? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> He's a subjectivist, no question. Of course. <laughs> Well, look, I, I didn't know you people felt so bitterly about religion. Peace, our feelings do not count here. Reason tells us that religion is evil. Religion is evil, which means anti-life, which means anti-mind, which means anti-reason, which means anti-reality. Well done, comrade. <laughs> Oh, look, I told you, I don't take religion that seriously. My God, we are talking about life and that matters here. Doesn't he realize, oh, oh. Mr. Hackley, don't you take anything seriously? Geese, how could you? <sighs> Mr. Hackley, perhaps we can approach this from a different level through aesthetics. What composers do you like, for example? Oh, uh, well, I like the standard, you know, uh, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> your taste reveals your, your premises, your musical premises. Hey, Keith, how could you? I, who know the depth of depravity, to which, to which most men sink. Even I have to ask myself, how can they? Beethoven, Mozart, who reek of naturalism, whose work tramples on values, whose every note displays the malevolent universe premise. Malevolent? <laughs> oh, Keith, can't you see the hatred of life in every note every bar of music. Uh, now, now, Keith Hackley, you uh, said that you like the browsers because you oppose <coughs> collectivism and totalitarianism. Oh, right? yes, yes, exactly. You see, Well, I, now, how in the name of reason can you appreciate Mozart, who on the malevolent universe premise, uh, he's on the same premise as the collectivists that you claim to despise. You see, they are all part of the anti-life, anti-mind enemy. <laughs> Are you saying that Mozart was a collectivist? Oh, not on that very primitive kind of way. But the system of premises interconnect 
on a deeper and therefore on a more important level. Do you see? <laughs> Keith, we like to ask a question of every new person we meet. Who in the brow of Zeus did you find the most important character? Oh, well, I like uh, Joey Fontana. Joey, Joey Fontana! <laughs> yes, why? Why, Keith? Why Joey Fontana? Well, he seemed to be uh, on the side of the good. Freedom and uh, a bright, good-natured fellow. And... Oh, oh. Joey Fontana is the very image of a nice, third-rate common man. And you choose him over a hero like Carl Crane or Sebastian Del Rey. <laughs> well, they were okay. They just seemed a bit wooden and one-dimensional. Enough! <laughs> Keith Hackley, you have had the rare privilege of spending an evening with the greatest minds you should ever hope to meet. Carson Sand, Greta Lansdowne, and, of course, myself. <laughs> and how have you treated this privilege? Above all, how have you treated Carson Sand? I have sat right here while you have committed a irreversible unforgivable sins against Carson Sand. You have continually interrupted her in the middle of sentences, hardly allowing her a chance to speak. You've evaded every question which Carson or I have put to you. You continually, to co to us and the me sticks, <laughs> to us and Mozart, to us and all the depravities of our society, you criticize instead of asking questions. You mock like a hooligan instead of showing the proper sort of reverence. And to whom, Keith Hackley? To this woman. To this woman, Carson Sand has brought to the world the knowledge that A is A. <laughs> and that two plus two equals four. <laughs> Finally, Keith Hackley, you have capped your crimes by saying that your favorite character was Joey Fontana, the perfect image of the mediocre, the nice guy, the second hand. <laughs> Keith Hackley, you have damned yourself forevermore. Yes, yes, Keith Hackley. Yes, you've made your choice, and you've only left me one alternative. I must ask that you leave this house never to return again. <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Kelly, but you seem like a very nice fellow. How can you stand all this? Oh, you get understood after a while. <laughs> this goes on almost every evening. <laughs> you learn to forget a lot. <laughs> sit on the couch, say yes every now and then, oh hell, it's a living. <laughs> <laughs>